Hello and welcome to another Warhammer The Old World video. Today I'm going to be building and painting some Necropolis Knights. This box can be built as either Necropolis Knights or Sepulchral Stalkers. I'm choosing to build it as the Knights. I'll buy a second box at some point in the future and build it as the Stalkers. But I think the Knights are slightly more useful for my style of play. They have more attacks. so. I just want to build the knights. The box comes with three plastic sprues and a small booklet on how to build them. Strangely, the booklet tells you how to build the Necropolis Knights, but doesn't show you how to build the Sepulchral Stalkers. Now, I guess once you've built the big snake, uh, it's not too difficult to add a pair of arms and a weapon on. But I do feel, especially for new people, people that haven't built models like this in the past, they should have included at least some pictorial guide on how to build these, but there you go. The giant snakes come in three different sections, and the little booklet does do a good job of guiding you through building one section at a time. Just remember not to clip any parts off the sprues that you're not currently using to build, otherwise you'll have a nightmare trying to remember what part goes where. Once you've built the first snake body, you can see that they're quite easily constructed. Once you realise what parts you're looking for, you can find them quite easily on the sprues. Just make sure you're using a good sharp pair of side cutters and have a sharp knife handy to, to scrape off molt line. Well, that's the three snake bodies done. And now it's on to the heads. You'll see the heads are made up of three pieces. Go together quite easily. And then it's on to the three capes. I do believe they're called capes of the snake. Again, these are straightforward enough. Each side of the cape is in two pieces and then there's a center section that they glue to. So the first color up is gonna be hop like gold from the Army Painter Speed Paints range. It's going to be used very extensively because there's a lot of areas on the snake itself that need painted gold and there's a lot of areas on the warrior on top of the snake that needs painted gold as well. This guy's going to be the unit champion. You can tell that from the golden mask that he's wearing. This gold speed paint flows really well and it's very easy to paint areas that you don't want to paint on this snake, especially down the spine of it. So just be careful. It is easier to paint because the paint does flow, but it's also, you're gonna have to go in and touch up areas with white again. That's just the way, that's just the nature of these paints. And now I'm using Game Color Dead White from Vallejo and I'm touching up areas on the snake and on the champion, although not so much on the champion, mostly on the snake. Areas that the gold has run into that I didn't want it to run into. The most problematic areas being under the cape as you can see here and also down the spine of the snake. The paint likes to run into the recesses and we're trying to patch that up with white. And in keeping with the box art, I'm going to go for a dark black blue for the body of the snake. So I'm going to use this Terrian Navy from Army Painter Speed Paints. Even though I'm using speed paints, there's still nothing really fast about doing this. You have to take your time, especially between the gold and the cape, because the paint does like to run. I will have to go back in with gold at a later stage in the paint job to cover up some of the areas that have been unfortunately hit with the blue paint. That's just the nature again of using speed paints. They do flow really well but sometimes they flow a little too well. So 
So I'm going to take this opportunity while some of the paint is drying to start on the base. Uh, I haven't stuck the snake on the base yet. With hindsight I probably should have done that and for the future ones I probably will do that. I figured doing the base first before putting the snake on the base would save me hitting the body of the snake while dry brushing the base. But again with hindsight I think using a smaller dry brush and being careful it wouldn't be an issue. And it would aid with holding the snake while you're painting it. It can get quite awkward holding that skinny wee body while you're trying to get at certain areas. Had it been on a base it would have been a bit easier. So the AK interactive material is on the base and I've given it a layer of sand and now I'm waiting for it to dry. While I'm waiting for it to dry the snake has dried and I'm going to go in with the white paint and give it a light dry brush down the sides of the cape and along the sides of the, the body of the snake because I want to put a lighter blue over the top of this dark blue. And now I'm going to use some Caribbean blue because that's the blue that I've chosen as the blue colour for my Tomb King's army. So it makes sense that it's somewhere on this snake. So the areas that I have dry brushed white I'm now going to coat with a wash 50-50 mix of the Caribbean blue and water and it's basically just a wash over the top of those areas and you'll see for yourself it's quite effective. It's like a poor man's edge highlighting. And now yet again while waiting on the snake to dry I'm back onto the base. I'm going to add a wash of Agoros Dunes very heavily diluted with water just over the top of the sand it helps change the color of the sand a little bit and it also helps bind it to the surface i've done this with all my tomb kings bases so far and i've been quite pleased with the result this will get a dry brush of screaming skull once it's dry so the next color up is going to be slaughter red again from the army painter speed paints range and it's going to be the third main colour of this model. The rest of the body of the snake is going to get painted with this red. And some of the areas around the crests on the head are going to get painted with this red. And also some areas on the champion, such as his spear, are going to get painted with this red. If you use a fine detail pointed brush here, it's not a problem. This paint will flow quite well between the two gold bands either side of it. If you do make a mistake here, it's not a big deal. We can go in later with a gold paint and fix it. So I've had a few months experience now with these speed paints and I can highly recommend them. I think they're really good. Just don't do what I do. Pick the colours you want. Don't just buy the set. Pick the colours. Save yourself a bit of money and also you'll get the colours that you want rather than colours that you feel you have to use. I'm now going to glue the snake to the base and I'm just using super glue. Thick super glue. Um, the snake is not a great fit on the base to be fair, it kind of it doesn't lie completely flat. You do need to hold it down. It's not a big deal. Um, you're just going to need to use both your hands quite probably and hold it for a good 20-30 seconds before the glue is set enough to hold it. So the red paint on my palette is still wet, which is great. So it means I can pick up the character model now and start painting him. Again, his spear gets painted red and so is the handle that he's holding onto the snake with. And there's a few little areas around his chest and around the crest 
that is going to get painted red as well. Because these guys are heavily armoured and heavily bandaged, they're actually going to be very simple to paint. So I'm back to the Caribbean blue and I'm going to use it to paint some of the details now on both the snake and on the rider. Again this entire model has been painted with a fine detail brush, just take your time. You really just have to get a bit of paint on the brush and dab and it will flow pretty much where you want it to. You're really only guiding it rather than painting with it. Now for some Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel. This is a wash and I'm going to use it to darken down and add some definition and detail to all the gold areas on both the snake and the rider. As you can see I'm giving the underneath of the cape a good coating of this Reichland Flesh Shade. When it dries it'll provide a lot of free shading and also it'll cover some of the accidents that we've made with the gold paint or the blue paint. This will sit like a barrier between both of them and conceal it. It's actually, it's like a trick but it works. I'll also give the spine down the back of the snake a good coat of this. Now back to the rider again and I'm going to use brownish decay. Again it's a speed paint colour and I'm going to use it for all the bandages that's on the model and also for the back of the shields will get coloured with this colour. I think it's quite nice and it's quite suitable. You also don't need to be super neat here because there's a lot of this figure is bandages, so don't worry about going over other areas. You can't really do any harm here, because this colour is almost like a wash anyway. And now for the first and only time that I'll use pallid bone on this model, even though they're undead and I've loved this colour. It's used very sparingly on this model because there isn't a whole lot of it, which is visible skeleton, feet, parts of arms, back of head, that type of stuff. You'll see yourself, the rib cage. And now I'm on to painting the shield. So the first areas of the shield that are going to get done are all the gold areas. And again, I'm using hop like gold. These shields are a little more fancy than what comes with the standard rank and file skeletons but I wouldn't worry about it too much, just paint them the same way. Add a bit of colour here and there, or don't. It's entirely up to you. Uh, the bulk of my shields are going to be the Caribbean blue colour because that's just the colours that I've chosen for my army. So paint all the metalwork gold and then we can come back in with some white touch up and then add our colours. So I'm back in with the dead white and I'm going to touch up some areas of the shield that I hit with the gold that I didn't want to hit. I'm also going to do the edge of the base because I want the edge of the base to match the same colour as the rest of the army and I don't want to try and paint straight over plastic so I do like to have a base coat. So this white is going to be the base coat. And now it's time for some Caribbean blue for the shield. Again. Just be careful in this plane will flow. It will need two or three coats just to give you a pretty solid colour. But again it's very simple to do and it only takes a few seconds. I'm now going to use Reichland Flesh Shade and I'm going to use it neat on the gold areas of the rider. 
I'm also going to water it down a bit to hit some of the areas of colour, red and blue, on the models. And again, it will just flow into the recesses and provide a bit of definition between the colours. Free shading and free touch-ups. I'm also going to use a bit of slaughter red on some areas of the shield. A little bit of experimentation here. I painted over the gold area, the bottom of the shield with this red. And I wasn't happy with it on reflection, so I repainted over it yet again. You can get away with multiple coats using these thin paints. I'm now going to use another paint that I rarely use these days, and that's Citadel Retributor Armor. It is a nice colour, but since I got the speed paints, I found myself going less and less for traditional paints. However, they do still serve a purpose. They do cover really well, so that's exactly what I'm going to use it for here. That is to bring out some of the highlights on the metal work on all of them, all three models. And now it's time to glue the rider onto the snake. You just need to trial fit him before you put glue on because you don't want this glue to be dabbed anywhere that it doesn't have to be. So trial fit your rider to the snake, be happy with where he's going and then glue them on. Again, you'll have to hold them for a few seconds, but super glue dries that fast. It's not a big deal. I'm now going to use some tan earth color just to edge the base. This is the color I'm choosing to use. You use whatever color you've chose for your army. A lot of people like black. I don't. Not on this particular army. On some armies it looks fine. But at the end of the day, even on a grass battlefield, to me, black bases look daft. You can tell that it's a base instantly. Why not at least make it green and blend it in with the rest of the battlefield? But that's just me anyway. And lastly I'm adding a few tufts to the bases. As, as I've said before I use the Army Painter tufts. I think they're great. They just break up the standard look of the base and give it that little 3D effect. And that's it. Model complete. Two more to go for the unit. But I wanted to get this done and let you guys see that with the speed paints and it does take a little bit of time because there's a lot of fiddly parts of this model that you just have to be careful when you're painting. Especially the gold under the cape and the gold bands around the centre of the snake's torso and even the gold down the back of the snake's spine. Just take your time. However, and the Army Painter Speed Paint Gold flows really well. You will have to go in again with the white, as I have stated, and do a bit of touching up, but it's worth it. I think it's worth it in the long run. I'm quite happy with this model. Um, I'll be quite pleased to put the unit on the table. It doesn't offend my eyes, and I'm looking forward to hopefully killing some Bretonians with them. I would like to thank you for watching my videos and if you haven't yet please hit the subscribe button it would mean the world to me and I appreciate it very much and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and have a great day.